<clears throat> All right. Hello, my friends. It is 10 a.m. So we are going to get started. Let me just, so you were looking at some Cuban burrowing roaches. We are gonna talk about those. But first, let me get our little, inter little introduction done. So hello, my bug friends. Uh, my name is Jenny and I run the insect zoo at Iowa State University and I'm also an entomologist. So an entomologist is a scientist who studies bugs. But as an entomologist, we don't only study bugs. We get to study the largest group of animals on earth called arthropods. Now arthropods are animals, just like humans are an animal, uh, dogs are an animal, dolphins are animals. There's so many animals on our planet. But arthropods are much different than all of these other animals. So to be an arthropod, you must have bones on the outside of the body, a skeleton on the outside of the body. Where's your skeleton at? Is it on the outside? No, you have bones inside your body. Well, arthropods, they do not have bones inside their body. So does anybody know what it's called? What a, a skeleton on the outside of the body is called? An exoskeleton. So an exoskeleton is a skeleton, but it's on the outside of the body. So that's the kind of skeleton that arthropods have. So what are arthropods? Those are insects, spiders, tarantulas, millipedes, centipedes, scorpions, shrimp, crabs, and lobsters. So there are a lot of arthropods on our planet. In fact, there are more arthropods on our planet than any other animal combined. So that's a lot. And that's why it's so exciting to be an entomologist because we get to study so many awesome animals. In fact, I could study a new animal every day of my life and never have to study the same arthropod twice. That is a lot. So um, a couple people have asked me why I decided to become an entomologist. So today I'm gonna tell you why I became an entomologist. First of all, when I was a little girl, I was kind of scared of bugs. I thought they were gross and I thought they would hurt me if I touched them. And when I saw them, do you know what I did to them? I smashed them. Which now I look back on that little Jenny and I think, why did I smash all of those bugs? Um, I would also eat <laughs> the insects. Um, when I was very little, I would go outside and I would make uh, like mud pies with all sorts of weird things inside that I found or inside of it that I found outside. And my kids do this today. In fact, just the other day, they brought me a soup that they had made outside from things that they found. So when I was a little girl, I used to eat things like ants and spiders. <laughs> And I also used to play with bees. I do not suggest playing with bees. But you know what happened? I fell in love with the bugs. So while playing with these, I decided that instead of just being afraid of them and thinking they were super gross and that they were going to hurt me, I was going to explore them and I was going to learn about them. And as, the, as I grew up, I had a, a, a love for bugs, but not just bugs, all nature. And so when I went to college, I was first, I was studying plants because plants were, uh, you know, were, are really cool. There's lots of plants on our planet, very important. And so I was studying plants and then I had to take an entomology course about insects, it was called insect science. And so I took this class and it changed my life. I remembered 
falling in love with bugs when I was little and how awesome I thought they were and all of that cool stuff got brought back up right in my face when I was in college and I could make a decision to become an entomologist and that's what I did. I changed my major. I started out, I, I started my uh, college career as an insect science major or entomology and I loved it. I became a beekeeper at the University of Nebraska Lincoln and I kept bees and I still keep bees. I'm also a honey judge, so I get to judge honey at state fairs like um, the Kansas State Fair, the Iowa State Fair. I love being a beekeeper, I love being an entomologist, but also I love kids. So I love teaching kids about these animals because maybe someday they will realize that they're not super gross, instead they're very cool and we can learn a lot about them and uh, they help our planet. So that is why I do what I do today. I want to spread the bug love all over the world. So um, I love keeping these animals and um, teaching about them. Okay, so now what are we talking about today? We are talking about cockroaches. Cockroaches are an insect. That means they have six legs, three on each side, and they have three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Um, they also have antennae, which are little things that wiggle around on their head, and we will look at some antennae on some of the cockroaches. Now, we know that a lot of people think cockroaches are super disgusting. It's something that when I bring out a cockroach, everybody is like, hey, she have a cockroach in her hand. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about one cockroach that is a pest. And that's the first cockroach I am going to talk about. So this first cockroach, well, first of all, let me tell you how many cockroaches are on our planet. There are about 5,000 species or kinds of cockroach. So species is like Okay, so if you think of, um, well, let's just talk about insects. So insects, there are different kinds. So you can be a cockroach, but you are different than a different cockroach. So we call you a different species. So it's different kinds, like a breed of a dog. So let's say we have German Shepherd dogs, we have Chihuahuas, we have uh, Pit Bulls, we have Rottweilers, we have whatever your dog is that you have at home. So we have all these different breeds of dogs. Now those are all the same species, but they're different breeds, okay? With insects, there are different species within a group. So uh, 5,000 different species or kinds of cockroaches all over the world. Guess how many of those are actually a pest. Now a pest is something that can cause you harm or the environment harm, like something that eats our corn that we're trying to grow or the vegetables you're trying to grow in your garden. Those are pests. So guess how many of the 5,000 species of cockroaches are pests? About four. That's it. Only four. And I have one of them right here that I'm gonna share with you. So first I'm gonna take this lid off of here and then I am going to, ooh, I have some comments. So my comments weren't coming up on my, my phone because I'm doing this live on my phone right now. Um, so I brought my computer so I can make sure I can see everybody's comments and I say, oh, hi Nikki, hi Harrison and Macy. How are you guys doing? And then thanks for this, my son. Oh, Nate, I am so glad that you like the bugs. I hope that someday we can see you in person. Um, let's see, oh, and Vance, I forgot to say hi to Vance. Hi, Vance. <laughs> okay, um, I have um, something in here I wanna show you. I'm gonna get my camera and I'm gonna turn it around so that you can see what I have here. Okay. So these are American cockroaches. 
these cockroaches are a pest. And you notice there's two in this cup. And they're two different colors. Well, that's because this one up here, this one just molted. So molting is the shedding of the exoskeleton. So when these animals have to grow, they have to shed their exoskeleton because their exoskeleton is very, very hard. So they're growing inside of their exoskeleton. And when they get too big for that exoskeleton, they bust out of it and they crawl out and their body is very, very soft because their new exoskeleton has not got hard yet. So when they first molt, oh, she is struggling here. She's stuck. There you go. So when they uh, molt, they are white. And then as they get harder, their exoskeleton gets harder, they change to the color that they are going to be. And these guys are climbers. So they can climb up smooth surfaces. They have some special little pads on the bottom of their feet that we will look at on a different cockroach that help, they're like suction cups that help them to climb up glass. So the American cockroach is not actually native to America. Um, it was brought over to America from Africa in the 1600s. So it has been here for a very long time. Now the eggs of the American cockroach, they are hard and round. They look like a big seed. And those are called uthikas, O-O-T-H-E-C-A. There's lots of ways you can say that. Now, once these cockroaches become mature, the female, which takes about 600 days, which is, almost two years. So once the female becomes mature, she can lay one egg sac or uthika every month for about 10 months. And in each egg, there are 16 babies in each uthika or egg sac. And those egg sacs are gonna hatch in about six to eight weeks. Now, after they hatch, the little baby cockroaches will molt between six and 14 times. It depends on how much food they have. Um, the more food they have, the less they have to molt. But if they don't have a lot of food, then they molt more times. So after that six, about 600 days as a little baby, which we call a nymph, that, and it becomes an adult, they can live for another 400 days. That's a long time. So American cockroaches are very long-lived cockroaches. Now, why are American cockroaches a pest? Well, they are found all over the place and they really prefer clean environments but they will be in gross environments like in alleys or garbage cans or houses that are really dirty or run down buildings and they can feed on literally anything so they prefer to eat good foods like we eat like cheerios and candy and uh, fruits and vegetables, but they can also eat things like glue or paper or fabric. So they can live off of anything. They can also go a really long time without water. They're also a pest because they are great swimmers and they can hold their breath for an estimated 60 minutes. That's a really long time. And they like to travel through pipes and sewage. So I said a word there, sewage, what is that? So sewage is like our waste. You know what you could pick up in waste? Bacteria, viruses, 
protozoans, parasitic worms, and in fact, there are about 22 different species of bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoans, which are bad things for humans, but there are about 22 different kinds of those that can be carried on an American cockroach's body. There are also about five species of parasitic worms that are also associated with these. Well, now my question to you is if these cockroaches have all of those gross viruses and bacteria and, and, and parasitic worms that they carry on their body, how come it doesn't kill all of the American cockroaches? Well, I know the answer to that. And that is because the American cockroaches, which are a pest, they produce antibacterial and antimicrobial compounds in their gut. So their gut is like their stomach. And antibacterial, antimicrobial is like hand sanitizer. So you use hand sanitizer to kill all the germs and bacteria on your hands. These American cockroaches make their own hand sanitizer right in their stomach. And that helps to protect them from all of this stuff that they come into contact with when they are traveling through human waste and gross stuff really made by humans. So yes, these cockroaches can transfer these bacteria and viruses to countertops or on your food or even to you, but it doesn't affect them because they make their own medicine. Speaking of medicine, guess what scientists are doing? Scientists are using the stuff, the antibacterial and microbial compounds that are in the cockroach's gut or their stomach, scientists are using that to make medicine for humans. You heard that right. We are using American cockroaches to make medicine for humans. Now, don't go eating American cockroaches because those are really gross and they do have lots of bad things around them. Let the scientists isolate or, or take away those antimicrobial and bacterial properties in the cockroach to make medicine for us. But someday, these cockroaches could save your life. Now, some places like in China, um, cockroaches are used for medicine already. And they have been for a very, very, very long time. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about a new cockroach. <clears throat> and I think we're gonna do, where's my friends that I got? Ooh, we're gonna do these guys. All right, so let me put my lid on these American cockroaches. Say bye American cockroaches. Look at their long antennae. They are so long. Okay, so here we go. These, oh, that was my finger. Let me um, open this up. See, I have to have the lids on these because some of them are climbers. So they can climb, climb, climb. Okay, what do we have here? These are dwarf cave roaches. Um, also, um, sometimes called dusky cave roaches. So the cave roaches are found in South America. And this cave roach is a smaller version of the giant cave roach, which can grow up to three inches. And you notice I have three roaches in here and they all look different. So cockroaches go through metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means a big change but these guys go through a gradual metamorphosis, not a complete metamorphosis like a butterfly goes through. A gradual metamorphosis means it's a 
gradual big change. So in the end, it is a big change. See this one right here? That is the adult, and it looks much different than this one here, who is a nymph. And then let me get, come here, friend. My finger doesn't reach down in there. I would, oh, look at that one. See, don't they look different, all three of them? So this nymph right here is smaller. It is younger. This nymph is older, it's bigger. And then here, get off of that one. Go ahead, get off. And this one here is an adult. So a gradual metamorphosis. So this means that they grow gradually, but they still molt. So each time they grow, they look similar to what they looked before. They don't look completely different, like a caterpillar looks completely different than a butterfly. Instead, they look gradually different. Here, get off my friend here. There we go. Now, when they become an adult, some insects that go through gradual metamorphosis have wings, like these cave roaches. They have wings. Now, the cave roach, can you guess where it lives? Just take a guess. In caves. And what else lives in caves? Let me get out my adult friend here. What else lives in caves? Bats. Bats live in caves. So guess what caves, cave roaches eat? Not the bats. They eat the bat poop. <laughs> That's right. These cave roaches feed on, look at him. He just gave a little jump and tried to fly. There he goes. He wants to fly all over the place. As you can see, these cockroaches, whoops, can fly. Come back here, my friend. Whoop. All right, here he is. Look at him. Let's see if we can get him to fly again. No, nope. where are you going? Up my arm. Okay, here. You know what? Whoop, hello. He's going in my sleeve. Uh -huh. He's going in my shirt. <laughs> Funny guy. All right. So these cave roaches can fly. Come up here. Whoop, there he goes again. But they have to do like a little jump to be able to fly. You see that? Nope, nope, nope. He's gonna run off the table. Okay, let me hold him close. So when I hold these animals, I am being very gently, gentle, but I am holding them firmly. And I hold them by their thorax got that uh, light up there that makes it hard to see. So look at him. Ooh, and I smell him. So a lot of cockroaches have an odor. And if you were here with me right now, I would ask you to smell the cockroach. So these guys, they have kind of a sweet musky smell. And they have that smell, first of all, because of what they eat. That helps them make that odor, but also it's a defense. Because if they smell bad, then animals will not want to eat him. I want you to be able to see his cute little face here. Let me see if I can get here. Let me see if he will focus. Nope, no focus. Maybe if I turn it around, because this camera is better on this side. I want you to see his cute little face, because he is so cute. Look at that. And I'm shaky. Isn't he just cute? Very cute. I do think cockroaches are cute. They have a chewing mouth part, so they chew their food, which you should do too, but make sure you chew with your mouth closed. Look at those antennae going crazy. Oh, and you see those little things on his mouth that look like a little tiny pair of legs? He's tasting me. He's like, what is this? What is this? What is this thing that is holding me? So they do have six legs. This guy is not gonna cooperate, so we will talk about the legs on another one. But there's his little head. Hello, friend. All right, I'm gonna put him back into the enclosure. So these guys feed on bat poop, bat guano. And why is that important? Well, something has to eat all that bat guano. If the bats live in the cave, and it just fills up with bat poop. 
that's gonna make the bats sick. They won't really have a good place to live, right? So somebody has to eat it. It's not just the cockroaches that eat it. There's, there's other things that also eat the bat guano. But these guys, they feed on the bat guano. So remember how I talked about species or kinds of cockroaches? Just in, just of cave roaches, there are like 19 species of them. So there's like 19 different kinds of cave roaches, which is really cool because it's very important and they are not a pest. They don't like living in human houses. They want to live out in caves and decompose or break down the bat guano or poop. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about another cockroach. Which one shall we do next? How about this guy right here? I really like these. And this is the last one of our colony, which makes me very sad. Let's get him up here. There we go. So this is a peppered roach. These are found in places like Guatemala, Panama, Colombia, and even in Costa Rica. And they live in the humid forest. So they humid is moist. So they like moist environments and they live on the forest floor. And guess what they eat? They eat dead rotting stuff. They are decomposers. Very important that we have decomposers on our planet. Decomposers eat dead rotting stuff like dead leaves, dead wood, anything that's dead and rotting that would be on the forest floor. And they eat all that and then it works, it way, it works its way through their body and then they poop it out. And that poop is like vitamins for the earth. So it helps the plants and trees to grow. So decomposers are very important for our environment. Now this guy, he is actually very nice. So I'm gonna get him out. He doesn't move around very much and he's very, very, very big. So here, I'm gonna show you just how big he is. Look how big he is on my hand. Isn't he so big? He's one of the biggest cockroaches on the planet that we know of. There are cockroaches that are bigger than this guy. Now you might notice that so far, all these cockroaches have like this helmet on. You see that helmet? So that helmet is called a pronotum, and it's actually a part of their thorax that comes up and over their head. Oh, look at his cute little face. And that pronotum is there to um, help protect his head. I'm sure you can see the cockroach's eyes are black. They're right there on the top of the head. And under the eyes are the antennae. And then under, that is his mouth. Oh, look how well behaved this guy is. Isn't he great? Look at him, isn't he cute? He says, hi friends, please love me. I am not a pest. These cockroaches are not pests, they are decomposers. And so they do not like living in human houses. <laughs> they do not carry diseases. All right, let's pull out another cockroach. How about that? I have one over here that we actually feed to our insects, but there it is. This is an orange headed roach. And you can see how much smaller this one is than the other, than the, uh, the peppered roach. The orange headed roaches come from Central America and also like Northern South America. And guess where they're found? mostly in caves. So they also will feed on bat guano, but you can also find them out in the on the forest floor in the leaf litter and they will feed on dead decaying leaves. So these cockroaches, they live about three years and um, they can grow up to about two inches in length. And I mentioned that we feed these to our animals. Well, we feed these to things like um, tarantulas and scorpions 
And there are people all over the world that keep tarantulas and scorpions, and they also feed them these types of cockroaches. So this is the orange-headed roach. Okay, oh, I've got another roach I wanna show you here. So this next roach is called a Cuban burrowing roach. And these guys are found primarily in Cuba, but they can be found um, some other places also. And I have a male and a female here. Can you guess which one is the male and which one is the female? Raise your hand if you think this one is the male. Okay, I can't see your hands. <laughs> Jeez, can you tell that I'm not used to doing this on lives? I'm used to having the kids in front of me. Okay, how about give me a like or a heart if you think this one is the male. Give me a heart or a like if you think this one is the male. Okay, give me a, give me a sad face if you think this one is the male. Give me a sad face if you think this one is the male. That's good. That's great. Okay, so heart if this one is the male, sad face if this one is the male. That's good. Okay, so this one right here, the small one is the male and this big one is the female. What? And that's because in the world of arthropods, usually the females are bigger than the male. Now, if you watch some of my other lives, you would have had a hint about that. Because we talked about that with the, let's see, what did we talk about that with? Oh, the walking sticks and also the tarantulas. And we talked about it with the scorpions. So also look, this male, he has wings all the way down to here. I could not find my forceps. Ooh, guess what? There's some here. It'd be clearer if I'm using forceps here. Okay, so the male's wings go down all the way to here. You see that? But the female just has these little wing buds. That's what we call them. They're not fully formed wings, so they only go to here. But he cannot fly with those wings. Even though he has them, he cannot fly with them. So can you guess where the burrowing roach lives? They like to burrow or they like to live in like crevices, like in a tree. Like if you've ever seen a hole in a tree, that's where these guys would like to live. And they are also decomposers. So they eat dead rotting stuff and make vitamins for our earth. Now something you may have noticed on these cockroaches is on their legs. Do you see all those little spikes on their legs? Those are actually setae, which are those super hairs that have superpowers. They can feel and hear and smell, but their setae is pushed tightly together. So it's really, really thick. But they use those, those little spikes, those condensed setae on their legs. They use it to hear and smell and feel around. And some of them also are really, really spiky. So they use it to help protect themselves. If something is picking them up, they will kick their legs and try to poke them with those little spines. All right, so those are the Cuban burrowing cockroaches. Let's find a new cockroach. And there's those Americans again. And just in the amount of time we've talked, this cockroach right here has gotten darker in color. Okay, this is gonna be fun because these cockroaches climb and fly. 
um, very easily. So I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna grab my forceps. So these are porcelain roaches. Now this species, the, the genus, so remember the genus name is the first name and that means that it's a big group of insects or animals. And then in that genus, there are different species or different kinds of that big group of animals. So this genus is Gyna, G-Y-N-A. And this species is Loridia. And these are the yellow porcelain roaches. Now this species was actually mostly reared or made by man. So humans actually produced these types of cockroaches. This color of the cockroach, look at you, you're all flipped over. But there are um, gyna cockroaches found in South Africa that are different colors than this one. In fact, there is a pink one that was also produced. Now you can see that these ones are very bright yellow. And then what is this? That is a nymph or a little baby. So these go through gradual metamorphosis. So they grow gradually. And you can see how different the nymph looks than the adult. Now these cockroaches can fly and they also can climb. They pre reproduce very quickly and they're very easy to take care of. So we have hundreds of these uh, at the insect zoo. Now in nature, the gyna cockroaches or porcelain cockroaches, they are decomposers. They eat on dead decaying leaves, and fruits that are rotting, vegetables that are rotting. So they are also very important for our environment. You see how when they flip over, they use their wings to help them flip back over? So they can use those wings for many things. All right, so now we're gonna look at another awesome cockroach. This cockroach is called a glow spot roach. And I only have a female right now, which is very sad because the males have little yellow dots about right here, one there and one there. And those yellow dots glow. Now they don't glow in our zoo or in most zoos, because in the wild, these cockroaches feed or receive a bacteria, probably that grows on a fungus that they eat, and it makes those spots glow. Well, we can't give them that bacteria in captivity or in the zoo, so, we, so they do not glow in captivity. But the glow spot roaches, are native to places like Colombia and Venezuela. And guess where they live? On the forest floor and they eat dead decaying stuff. So they are also decomposers. They eat that dead rotting stuff and make vitamins for our earth. Now, just like, you remember these um, burrowing roaches over here? Excuse me. These cockroaches, they only have wing buds. You see those right there? Those are wing buds. And they don't cover their abdomen. They are only covering their thorax. So these cockroaches cannot fly. They spend their life on the forest floor eating dead rotting stuff and making vitamins for our earth. All right. I have one more cockroach I want to share with you. And I'm sure that most of you know these cockroaches very well. Come on, Lid. Does anybody know what these are called? 
Madagascar hissing cockroaches. So Madagascar hissing cockroaches come from Madagascar, which is an island off the coast of Africa. And there in Madagascar, there are about 20 different species or kinds of hissing cockroaches. And guess what? All of them hiss, which is how they got their name. Now, these hissers, they can live up to five years, which is a long time for an insect. And they also go through gradual metamorphosis, or they grow gradually. And they molt six times before they become an adult. What's cool about these cockroaches is they give live birth. So all of our other cockroaches lay eggs. But these cockroaches hold their eggs inside of their body and then they give live birth, which is so cool. Now, I don't know if you notice, I can see them, but there are some little tiny critters crawling around. You see there are those little tiny critters there. Look, here's one over here. There's, there's one over here on this one. So those are little mites and they live on the cockroach's body. They cannot live off of the body. It's a symbiotic relationship. That means that both of the animals are benefited. They both get something from the relationship. So the cockroach gets cleaned by the little mite and the mite gets food and shelter and protection. Now we do clean the mites off of the cockroaches about every three to six months, we'll go through our colonies with a little tiny soft toothbrush and we'll brush off the mites just so that we don't get too many on them. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up this cockroach. I'm gonna pick up both of the cockroaches actually. And we are gonna talk about them. Can you hear them hissing? Come here guys. Okay. All right. So one of these cockroaches is the male and one of them is the female. I'm going to set this like this. So I want you to give me, give me a heart if you think this one is the male. Give me a wow face if you think this one is the male. Tell me what you think. Mmm, we've got some guesses. So if you guess that this one is the male, you are right. This is the female, this is the male. So with these cockroaches, it's not the size that tells you which is which, the males can be just as big as the females. Instead, it's these little bumps right here. And do you see those bumps on that pronotum or that like helmet that covers um, its head? So the males have those bumps, the females do not. You see, whoops, sorry lady. You see there? Males have the bumps, the females do not. Oh, come here, my friend. Okay, I'm gonna put the female back into her cup and we're gonna talk just about the male for a minute. All right, so they're called hissing cockroaches and they're called hissing cockroaches because they hiss. So I'm gonna make him hiss and while he's hissing, I just want you to watch the abdomen back there. Whoops, where are you going? <laughs> I just want you to watch this part. This is called the abdomen, okay? Are you ready? Can you see how the abdomen pumps? You see it pumping like that? It's like squeezing. Now, do you also notice that he's got black dots on his abdomen? 
Well, inside of those black dots are teeny tiny holes called spiracles. Can you guess what those spiracles are used for? For breathing and for hissing. So insects actually breathe through tiny holes on their abdomen, which are called spiracles. You can imagine them like little tiny mouths that open and close to let air in and out. So I told you that we were gonna talk about the little pads on the bottom of the feet. Let me see if I can get him to just hold still for a minute. Let's see if I can get him here. It's all right, buddy. It's all right. Now remember, I'm not actually hurting this cockroach. I'm holding him gently, but firmly. Hey, you know what? Maybe the female will be a little more calm. Sometimes the males are a little more aggressive. Okay, so let's see. Yep, here we go. I wouldn't say, I shouldn't have said aggressive. They're not aggressive at all. They're just a little more temperamental. So if we look at the cockroach's legs, do you see right where my fingernail is? There's like, you can see those white, white little marks there on his feet. Um, those are like pads and they're like suction cups. So that's why co some cockroaches can walk up glass. And you can see her spikes there and her spikes are hard, but see they move. You see me moving them? But those spikes, um, these are ones that will help to use those or use those for a sort of protection. If you grab them too hard, they will kick their legs like the male was doing and they will try to poke you with those. Now, why does this cockroach hiss? Because, okay, the cockroach I'm holding right now, is she hissing right now? No, but she will hiss. So why do you think these cockroaches hiss in nature? <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I'm going to show you I'm going to hiss again. Well, so there's a couple reasons they hiss. Number one, doesn't that hissing sound sound like another animal? What other animal hisses other than a cat? <laughs> How about a snake? So these guys, they can hiss to sound like a dangerous animal to protect themselves from predators. They also hiss when they are mating. So the males will fight over the females and they hiss to try and get the other males away just to show like, oh, I'm bigger, I'm scared, scarier than you are. Um, and they also, um, the females will hiss at the males because the males will try to eat the females' babies after they are born. I know, aren't you glad your dad did not try to eat you? So the males will actually try to eat the babies. So the female protects those babies. And the babies, when they're first born, remember this cockroach gives live birth. And these cockroaches will actually take care of their babies, which is not like any of the other cockroaches that we have looked at who just lay an egg sack and say, see you later and leave. They don't take care of their babies at all. These cockroaches, they do. Now I wanna show you this lady's little face because they really do just have such a cute little face. Look at that little face. I mean, maybe I'm biased, I don't know. I love cockroaches. And if you look at her antennae, they're actually very hairy. And the males are hairier. So they have that hairy, those hairy antennae because that's how they smell and feel around. All right, we're gonna put that cockroach back down in there turn my camera around guess what friends those are all the cockroaches that i had to share with you today i do have my insect zoo cockroach shirt on today this was designed by one of our past students josh burn and so joshua if you are watching hello uh, if you would like to purchase one of our cockroach shirts you totally can so we are running a special on the shirts it's ten dollars and I'm splitting the shipping with you. So shipping is just $2. So if you want an insect zoo t-shirt, we have the cockroach, we have jungle nymph, we have a scorpion, we have tarantulas. Um, so if you want one, uh, you can just email me zoo at iastate.edu 
or you can send me a Facebook message and I will hook you up with a t-shirt. So um, my friends, that is everything that I had to share with you today. I wanna thank you so much for joining us on our Facebook Live. We can't wait to get back out there and be able to teach the kids in person. If you are interested in having the Insect Zoo visit you in the future, please visit our website, zoo.ent.iastate.edu, and there you will find a request form to have us visit, and you will also find um, the page that lists our fees for a visit. We also do family visits, so you can come visit us. Of course, right now the insect zoo is shut down because of all of the stuff that is going on. So uh, we're not able to accommodate visits right now, but we are looking forward to summer and the next school year when we can get back into the schools. So thank you guys, have a wonderful day. Go forth and love the bugs.